What's up? What's up, man? I got my new song coming out. What's up, man? Got my new song coming out. We are the Smith family on YouTube. What's up, man? I thought you was going to get a hoodie, man. You told me the other day you was going to get a hoodie. I told you to email me with your phone number. I was going to call you. Never heard from you, man. Your word ain't no good, man. Your word is some shit. Your word ain't no good. I got my new song coming out, man. My new my new song coming out. What's up? Man's supposed to do what he say. The words that come out your mouth supposed to mean something. But I know that now in today's age, people say anything. I don't know why. Ah, but I used to do that too. When I was a little boy, I would just say anything. Promise, make promises I knew I couldn't keep. Say things. They got a kickball. It's a kickball field right here. That's where they play kickball at. They play kickball right there. What's up, man? What's going on? I got my new song coming out, man. I got one already made. I'm going to make the other two tomorrow. They already made. I just got to get with my man Eclipse. He going to clean them up for me, mix them down. What's up, man? I don't know what to talk about. It's just Friday night. I said, well, let me go live because I know they be looking for me, man. I'm excited about the new song. I'm excited. I'm excited about my new music. I ain't never did nothing like this before. So I'm excited. What y'all want to talk about, man? What y'all want to talk about? I got to get China Mac. I'm going out to LA. Once I drop my music, once I drop my music, I'm gonna go out to California. I'm gonna go on his platform. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on his, uh, I'm gonna go on his platform. on his platform. Yeah, shout out to China Mac, man. What's going on out here, y'all? Hmm? What's up, yo?
Talk to me, man. What's up? Friday night, man. I don't know what to talk about. I'm going to let y'all pick something to talk about. What y'all want to talk about? What y'all want to talk about? You want to talk about my new music? I got a new album coming out. You going to buy it? I was just at home listening to it, man. Nah, I don't want to talk about no March Madness. I don't want to talk about that. That's not important. NCAA basketball is not important. There's way more pressing issues to discuss than college basketball. Staying disciplined and distractions you got to overcome. Yep. That separates the successful for the from the unsuccessful, man. Those that can discipline themselves, man. Discipline is everything, man. Discipline is everything, man. Discipline is everything. Discipline is focus, man. When you got discipline, you can achieve anything, man. Without discipline, you just going to be existing. You just going to be existing, man. What did I put in the title? Did I put anything in the title for this video? What did I put in the title? I've been fans who are still fans of Melly Mel. And to this day, when I see Melly Mel, I speak to him, but Melly Mel was rotten. Yeah. You know, there was a there was an episode where he just passed me by. And my hand was out and all that shit. I don't know if it was consciously done or if it was just done as malice. I don't even know what I put in this. Uh, uh, I said, we're defending you, you're a very wealthy country, you're sending us millions of cars. What's up, y'all? Oh, Friday Night Men's Me, that's what I called it. Friday Night Men's Me. Let's talk about men's stuff. Friday Night Men's Me, Howard Cooper, thank you, man. Can you give us pointers on how to stay disciplined? What you mean give you pointers, man? Give you pointers on how to stay disciplined. Man, either you want to or you don't. There ain't no pointers. Nah, you did say you was gonna buy one. Don't don't do that. Don't back up off it now. I know what you said. I know what you said. It's all good. You ain't gotta buy one. You ain't got a bow. And I'm not your brother, because I don't know you. Don't be coming at me with all that old black shit, and all black power, my brother, my brother, all that old shit. That doesn't ingratiate yourself with me. I don't trust nobody, man. Out of all eight billion of y'all, I don't trust nobody. You know what you said. I heard what you said. You said what you said. It's, you know, it's all good. Don't matter. I got disciplined, man. The way I got disciplined, man, when I looked at how much time I was wasting and how much time I had wasted, the older you get, the longer you live and you realize your mortality and you realize that you're gonna die and you realize that 
there is no uh, supreme power that's going to give you and just hand in, put in your hands what it is that you desire and you come to the you reconcile in your mind the reality that anything that you want to happen you're going to have to make it happen that's when you get disciplined nobody ain't going to give you nothing man nothing Nobody cares about you. Nobody gives a shit. Remember that part. And when I realized that I had wasted a lot of time uh, just doing nothing, wasted a lot of time getting high, wasted a lot of time drinking, wasted a lot of time chasing women, Wasted a lot of time watching TV. Wasted a lot of time just, just doing nothing, man. That's once I realized that, I said, Sean, you got to get busy. You got to get busy. And that's when I got busy. Either you want to do it or you don't. Period. Either you want something out of life or you don't. That's it. Nobody giving you nothing. Don't nobody owe you nothing. You owe yourself more than what any man could ever owe you. You owe it to yourself. More. Don't nobody owe me nothing. I owe myself. The world don't owe me nothing. I ain't got nothing coming. There's no help, nothing. I owe me. I wake up every day to show you owe it to yourself to go out here and beat everybody and prove you the best. You got to go out here and you got to subdue nature. You got to create your circumstance. That's what Napoleon said. Napoleon was a French general Napoleon said, the hell with circumstance. I create circumstance. You create your world. You create the world you want to live in. They put out an arrest warrant for Vladimir Putin. All right, go get him. You know where he at. Go get him. Go get him. That's all for show. Go get them. You ain't got to do all that. You don't got to put nothing on TV. None of that. That's all for show. Go get them. I dare you to go get them. I dare you. I dare you. You got to create the world that you want. Once you start recognizing and realizing that you are a God in this world, not that you are God, but that you are a God, that you can create life, that you can take life, that you can destroy life, you can improve life, you have a lot of power. The human being is a very, very powerful thing. The human being is a very, very powerful thing, but he has been He's allowed himself to be indoctrinated to believe that there's a supreme being in the sky that's going to rescue him, that's going to save him. And when he doesn't get saved, when he doesn't get rescued by the supreme being, he feels abandoned and he feels unworthy that somehow the supreme being has forsaken him. That's a fallacy. That's no realer than the Easter Bunny. That's no realer than a leprechaun. That's no realer than Woody Woodpecker or Bugs Bunny. All these allegories and all these fables and all these religious stories. This is all, um, a lot of them are allegories based upon astronomy, right? Stars the constellations in the sky, the positions of the moon, the positions of the sun. And when you realize that, 
you realize that you are in charge of your destiny. You in charge of your destiny. Your life ain't shit because you ain't shit. Period. Your life is boring because you boring. Your life is exciting because you're exciting. Your life is worth living because you made it worth living. You have that job because you chose that job. You don't got no job because you don't want no job. It's all on you. It's all on you. That's it. That's it. You weak. I was weak. When my life was in the basement, that's because my thoughts were in the basement. When I was wrapped up in my drug addiction, I chose that. When I went to jail, when I went to prison, that was my fault. I made a conscious decision to do wrong. Right? I built my prison. I built my puzzle. I built the maze I couldn't get through. I built my life. I destroyed my life. And when I started taking accountability for my life, that's when my life changed. You got a good life. You got a good life. If you live in America, you got a good life. You got a good life with a lot of opportunities, but you just ain't doing nothing with it. You ain't doing nothing with it. You're not doing nothing with it. You distracted. I always been a go-getter, man. Always, my whole life. My whole life. I always been an achiever. I always wanted more. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do that. I wanted to achieve this. I wanted to achieve that. And I got busy putting it together. That's what I did. You gonna die. You gonna die. Robert Holder, what's up, man? Shout out to my nigga Robert Holder. Robert, thank you for buying your t-shirt. I mailed it off today. And the nigga on here with his name. Called him on the phone yesterday. You gonna die. So whatever you don't accomplish in your youth, you young, you strong, and you ain't doing nothing, you gonna look back one day, maybe, Maybe you might wake up one day and say, man, damn, all the time I wasted. I could have been doing this. I could have been doing that. I could have been doing that. I could have did that over there. I could have did that. I could have did that. I should have been doing that. Instead of doing that, I should have been doing that. Then I was over there, oh man, wasting time with them. And I should have been over here with them. That's my fault. And once you get into that, once you can hold yourself accountable and learn to police yourself, that's when your life going to change. you welcome, Holder. What's my thoughts on the banking crisis? The United States of America, London, NATO, the EU, all the European countries put sanctions on Russia, financial sanctions, kick them out of the SWIFT system, ostracize them from economic activity from all European countries, uh, put price caps on their oil, banned countries from buying oil from Russia. They made a deliberate attempt to destroy the Russian economy. And they, they blasted it all over the world. But look at what happened. Russia is rocking. 
India's buying all that oil, China's buying all that oil, Iran's buying all that oil. And the EU, the European countries that are a part of NATO, all of them are in recession. All of them are dealing with double digit inflation. The United States is in a recession, dealing with double digit inflation. Banking's banks are falling apart. The second largest bank failure in the history of the country. The banking system is crashing. And I know a lot of you conspiracy theorists are gonna say, yeah, they, this is what they wanted to do. They orchestrating that. They orchestrating that because they want to bring in this new digital currency. They, they do, fuck out of here. They never wanted that. They wanted to destroy my man. They wanted to destroy my man. His GDP, his GDP is flat. His GDP is flat. You trying to destroy somebody else and your banking system getting destroyed. And you losing the war. You spending all of this money on weapons, sending weapons over there, all this and that, trillions of dollars, billions of dollars. And yeah, they losing lives. Russia's losing lives, Ukraine losing lives, but still got his country, still got his sovereignty. Still rocking. Can't do wrong and get right. God don't like ugly. No, he don't. No, he don't. No, he don't. All them Europe, all those European countries, Germany is like 80% dependent on Russian oil. The United States blew up the Nord Stream pipeline so that Germany would have to buy liquid national gas, li liquid natural gas from the United States, man. It's, it's very sophisticated uh, geopolitical situation, man. And let me tell you this. No, I don't watch Chris Rock. I don't watch none of that buffoonery shit. I don't watch none of that. Will Smith, Chris Rock. I don't watch no black celebrities. Any black celebrity is beneath me. All black celebrities are beneath me. I'm outspoken. I speak my mind. I'm a man amongst men. None of them are. I'm a foundational black American. I'm born and raised in America, and I love America. I love this country and its freedoms and what it provides. But I'm also, my religion is reality. My religion is reality. And, um, America does not, it does have the most powerful military in the world, without a doubt but it does not have the fear factor that it once had from other countries around the world. The gap, the lead that it had, America was in first place in every facet of the world. Economic development, military industrial complex, democracy, freedoms, civil liberties, right? starting going back a hundred years right to the early 19th century late 18th no to the 20, late early 20th century late 19th century it was the leader right china was a third world nation russia was a third world country india was backwards africa was backwards iran was back the whole world was backwards asia south america and America was leading the way. So at that point, it had the power just from respect and fear that it could influence the world. That no longer exists today. China has linked up with Russia. India, on the sneak tip, on the quiet tip, has linked up with China and Russia. Iran is linked up with China and Russia. Saudi Arabia is now selling its oil 
in different currencies when at one point it only sold its oil in US dollars, right? So between China and India, that's 40% of the world's population, just those two countries alone, right? These countries are no longer third world countries. China's developed. China's got a military, it's a superpower. Maybe not be at the level of the superpower of America, but it's in the discussion. India has nuclear arms. China has nuclear arms. Russia has the largest. Russia has the largest nuclear arsenal in the world. The most sophisticated nuclear arsenal in the world. More nuclear warheads, the most hy hypersonic missiles, missiles that can't be shot down with a defense system. Russia's got that. Russia's developed militarily, economically. China's developed militarily, economically. India's developed militarily, economically. So it's a different, it's a different, it's a different, uh, it's a different situation, Mr. Bon Bonanza Gray, multipolar world in the making. Thank you for them $50 in kronas. That's right. China and Russia and India don't want nothing to do with this central bank digital currency America is trying to put out. They don't want nothing to do with it. They want to do business in their own currency. Y'all could do whatever you want to do over there, but America is trying to impose its will on everybody. Yo, all y'all niggas gonna use what we say. You understand? You gonna use it, you gonna use it, you gonna use it, and you gonna use it. And Russia already telling them off the door, we, we ain't using nothing. We ain't using none of that. China letting them know, never that. We not using that. We using our thing right here. India like, yeah, I hear you, but I ain't really with that. You understand? And Vladimir Putin will tell them flat out, yo, we ain't with none of that y'all doing over there. We ain't with none of that. And he's standing, he, he's standing on his square. He letting it go. His sneakers tied tight, he ready to go. And he ain't just talking, he letting it be known. So, you know, empires fall. I'm not saying that the American empire is falling or it's gonna fall or whatever, but the Egyptian empire, the Nubian empire fell, then rose up the Egyptian empire. The Egyptian empire fell, then rose up the Greek dynasty. The Greek dynasty fell, then came the Roman dynasty. The Roman dynasty fell, then came the Ottoman Empire. You know, and Ottoman Empire fell, then come Spain. No, Portugal. The Portuguese, Portuguese Empire fell, then came Spain. Spain fell, then came the Netherlands. The Netherlands fell, then came London. England fell, then came America. It happens, man. This is life. And it very well may just be happening during our time period. You know what I'm saying? That's why you niggas is stupid. You white boys, I'm talking to everybody. The white boys, the niggas, the Spanish, the Arabs, all y'all from America, all you young dudes is stupid for not getting busy. Taking advantage of opportunity. Y'all sitting around, wasting time, you get high, you play video games. You stupid. The world is taking place right before your eyes. And all of the media outlets, all of the media outlets in America are owned by the military industrial complex. They're owned by the multinational global corporations that are part of the war machine that's pumping out this agenda, this propaganda. And they got nothing to do with you. They don't care about nothing to do with you. And if you white, if you're a white American, at one time, you did enjoy 
white privilege, you did, you could live in peace of mind and saying like, well, at least I'm white and America's run, the whole world run by the white man and America run by the white man. So I'm gonna be cool. They are gonna kill everybody else. But the way this new, these elites that's getting down, they want to get rid of everybody. They want to get rid of poor whites, whites, blacks, Asians, Arabs. They want to get rid of everybody. They want to bring everybody under their thumb. So no one is, no one is safe. Your ethnicity, the way, the way they're trying to put this thing down, nobody's safe. Nobody's safe. And they got you stupid ass niggas and stupid ass white boys fighting with each other. Oh, I hate that nigga, is he white? You know, oh, look at them niggas over there. Yeah, look at them Mexicans over there. Look at this man. Look at the Arabs over there. Look at them. Y'all, y'all on some dumb stuff, hating each other. And these people, very small few, less than 1%, control all the natural resources and wealth in the world. They're going to get rid of all y'all stupid asses. While y'all fighting with each other, rather than coming together, unite and saying, "Yo, man, let's," you know what I'm saying? Let's put something down, man. Let's, you know what I'm saying? They control everybody, man. Me too. Yeah, I'm a part of this too. So, you know, you see, like, when you get my age, I don't really think about my life too much no more. I just think about, like, little Sean and his kids. Like, what kind of world I need to make moves today. to teach them how to develop a world that's advantageous for them and everybody, man. You know what I'm saying? It's about kindred spirits, man. It's about people that want right, that want to do right, and want to live right. You gotta want to live right. Shout out to my man that gave me that uh, Bonanza. Thank you for that super chat, Bonanza. Thank you, man. There's men and women, man. Men don't even, men are not even men no more. Sweden, I see you, Sweden. Thank you, man. Mr. Bonanza Gray, what up, man? Thank you for that super chat. I'm a man, you understand? My mother raised me, my mother told me, she said, you a boy child. You a man, you a man child. And if you a man, then you gotta be a man. You understand? You gotta understand, you gotta write to your life. You got a right to your life. You got a right to your life. Yes, you do. You better fight for it. Be willing to fight for it. So, like I was saying, what opportunities you think young black men should pursue? What the fuck is you asking me about young black men, man? What are you, 
you just pursue whatever you want to pursue. I can't speak for all young black men. Do what you want to do. This is eight billion people on this planet, man. Get off of that shit. Oh, I'm black. I'm, uh, oh, I'm black. Oh, my people was in slavery. All that old gay ass shit, man. Fake shit, man. That shit is weak, man. That's female shit. You do what you want to do. It's eight billion people in this world, man. Eight billion people in this world. Nobody cares about foundational black Americans and their plight and what happened to them. Nobody cares about, you know what I'm saying, the people from Panama. Nobody cares about the white people in Ireland. Nobody cares about the white people in Moldova. Nobody cares about the people in Chechnya, the people in Bulgaria. It's eight billion people out here, man. People are going for self. All that old weak ass shit. Hell, I'ma speak for all black men. You do what you wanna do. You do what you wanna do. It's your life. I can't speak for everybody. What the hell you think I am? God, that I can tell you what to do? I don't care what you do, to tell you the truth. I don't care what you do. I care what I do. I care about me and little Sean. That's it. All the black power. Yeah, black. You niggas are corny. You niggas are corny. You ain't ready to fight or do nothing. You ain't ready to do nothing. Up, I'm on my life. All right. Niggas ain't about nothing. You don't even, you ain't know the foundational black Americans of the day, man. We done fell off. We done fell all the way off. We don't look nothing like how we looked in the 70s. We don't have nowhere near the self esteem we had. I can't teach you nothing, man. You learn on yourself. I'm not beholden to you. I don't owe you nothing because I'm a black fight, because I'm a foundational black American YouTuber. You understand? I don't owe you nothing. And you are, you a are foundational black American. You owe yourself. You owe yourself. You understand? And just because I'm a foundational black American YouTuber, that don't make you down with me. It's a lot of informants that are foundational black Americans, a lot of backstabbers that are foundational black Americans, a lot of liars cheats, thieves, suckers that are foundational black America. That, just because we the same color and we from the same ethnicity, that don't make we down. That don't put you down with me. No hell it don't. No hell it don't. Fool them, devil. Fool them, devil. I don't know you. I don't know you. You on here with a fake profile. You could be, you could be Syrian for all I know. You could be, uh, Filipino for all I know. Get your ass up out of here. Start worrying about yourself. It's a sucker move. It's a sucker move. You niggas ain't ready to do nothing. What's up, Quan? You niggas ain't ready to do nothing. You ain't ready. To, you ain't in my league. A lot of y'all, I'm talking to all 8 billion of y'all, a lot of y'all ain't in my league. I lost $1.2 million when I was 43 years old. I made it. I was 38, 39. I became a millionaire. Goddamn three, four years later, I was dead broke. I had $3,000 and went to prison and went to prison. Could have ratted, didn't rat, could have stayed out of prison, left my son, lost everything. At 45, went to the joint, got out at 47, I've been out. 40, 60, I've been out seven years and look at what I done accomplished in seven years and I'm middle-aged. You niggas is young and strong and healthy and vibrant and full of vigor and got robust immune system and you niggas ain't shit. I'm talking to all y'all, the white boys, the Spanish boys, the Arabs, all y'all young, foundational black Americans, all y'all, all eight billion of y'all. I done came out and ran by y'all like y'all standing still. Y'all not in my league. You not in my league. You not in my league. You not in my league and I ain't your friend and you ain't my friend. I don't want no friends. I don't need no friends. I just need little Sean, that's it. He the only one that came to see me when I was in prison, him and my mother. And my mother died, so I ain't got but one friend. Who that right there? Howard Cooper. 
Howard Cooper. I ran by y'all like y'all standing still. Wrote three books. Get them, Sean. Get them, Sean. Y'all niggas got your finger in your ass. You got your finger up your ass. Niggas can't fuck with me. Niggas can't fuck with me. I'm out your league. I'm out your league. I look better than a lot of y'all. I'm healthy. No medication. No goddamn sickness. No illness. Thank God. Sun, moon, and stars. I take care of me. Came out, wrote three books, started a YouTube channel, the clothing line. Just did three songs. I just registered my shit with ASCAP. I'm finna put my first song. I'm doing all this shit by myself. I'm doing all this shit by myself. By myself. Couldn't get a job. Felony conviction. Foundational black American male. I got the wrong skin complexion for the protection. I got the wrong complexion for the protection. I didn't let that stop me. I started cleaning windows from nothing. All of this, what you see, all of this, what you see, started from a $3 window, from a $3 window cleaning window. Fuck out of here. I don't owe none of y'all nothing. Don't never try to hook up your goddamn caboose to me. You understand? Oh, Sean Black, I'm black. He gonna hook me up. No, I ain't. No, I ain't. I ain't hooking nobody up. I ain't hooking nobody up. I'm talking to all 8 billion of y'all. I hooked myself up. I did this shit on my own by myself. I did this by myself. By myself. Couldn't get a job. Started my own job. I built this shit here from nothing. Go smoke some weed. Go smoke some weed. Go smoke some weed. Go get drunk. Go take some perks. Go listen to some drill music, go listen to some rap music, go watch TV, go get your Netflix, renew your Netflix subscription, go do all that. Niggas corny, man. Not in my league. I work all of y'all. I haven't got one W two since I got out of prison. I haven't had not one job. I haven't had not one job since I got out of prison. Not one. Not one. But my refrigerator is full right now. Two dozen eggs, I got milk, I got orange juice, I got strawberries, I got toilet paper in my bathroom, I got paper towels, I got paper plates, I got forks, spoons, I got a stove. My pillowcases is clean and washed. My sheets, my comfort is clean. Sean got his, all Sean sheets is clean. His pillowcase is clean. He got clean drawers. He got clean socks. He got all that. Yeah, Quan got that, Quan got that wrench. I did this shit on my own. And I got a felony conviction. A federal one at that for fraud. I can't get no job nowhere. And I'm a descendant of the slaves of this country that ain't never got respect. I got the wrong skin complexion, but I'm still succeeding and I'm out succeeding all 8 billion of y'all. I don't like none of y'all.
I don't like none of y'all. I don't care what none of y'all do. You watch ESPN, you watch LeBron James, you watch, you know, March Madness, you watch the World Baseball Classic, you watch all this stuff, and you don't do nothing with your life. You know everything about LeBron, his statistics, size of his shoe, how many steals he had, you know, all that. You argue who the best, Kobe, LeBron, all that old. I don't have, I don't talk to none of y'all about none of that. Yeah, they dumb. They dumb, Texas. They dumb. They dumb. I know people look up to me, but I don't, I know y'all look up to me and some of y'all get inspired by me and none of that, but I'd have got to bring y'all back to reality. I'm just a regular guy. I'm just a regular guy that's a YouTuber. I'm not no goddamn celebrity. I'm not a black celebrity from Hollywood. I, I'm, the black celebrities in Hollywood are beneath me for several reasons. Number one, intellectually, right? Can't none of them match me spiritually or intellectually, intellectually if we were ever to be on a panel or uh, some type of um, open discussion or some type of forum, right? Don't none of them have the courage and the bravery that I have to speak out, you understand? And plus, they're owned. They are owned by the Hollywood studios. They have pawned their lives to Hollywood and to the music industry. They are beneath me. And I know y'all look up to me, but you're not going you're not going to make me start to feel like I'm special, like I'm some kind of special dude and I got the goddamn bow to you or answer your questions or give you the answers that you want to hear. I don't like y'all. I don't know you. You got a fake profile. I don't know nothing about you. I don't know nothing about you. You didn't none of y'all put no money on my books. I don't none of y'all if I wasn't a YouTuber, none of y'all wouldn't give a fuck about me. You say, look at that dumb nigga cleaning windows at 54 years old. You understand? I would never allow myself to believe that I'm somehow elevated over you. That I'm better than you. Only thing difference between me and you is that you fake, you hide behind a fake profile and I'm live and direct with my name and my face and I speak my mind. That's the only thing. I don't owe none of y'all nothing. You buy my merch, you watch my videos, I make money from YouTube, I'm appreciative, but I'm giving you a service in return, right? You buy a t-shirt, a hat from me, right? I give you, you give me your money. I don't, don't give you nothing back. I give you your t-shirt, your hat, your book, your hoodie, whatever you want. So it's a fair exchange, right? I don't, you don't, I don't owe y'all nothing. I don't owe y'all nothing. I owe me. I owe me. You understand? Yeah, look up to yourself. Look up to yourself. Don't look up to me. Look up to yourself. I make mistakes. I make mistakes. I'm human. I fuck up. I, 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 I make bad decisions. I do all of that. I do all of that. Be inspired by me. Be inspired by me, but look up to yourself. Be inspired by me, but look up to yourself. Because I will fail you. Because I'm imperfect. I'm imperfect. I make bad choices. I make mistakes. I succeed. I make great choices. I fail. I get defeated. I win. I get depressed. I get elated. Everything that you go through, I go through the same thing. Don't be goddamn putting no pressure on me, trying to make me think I'm somebody else. No, I ain't. No, I ain't. No, I ain't. Yeah. I just work hard. 
and I understand the value of time and I understand the value of life and I understand that I live in the United States of America which is the best which is the best country in the world for economic opportunity for entrepreneurship and I'm a perennial serial entrepreneur I'm the best I'm a salesman my mouthpiece is super strong I'm a salesman I'm an extrovert I like people I know how to engage people I'm an introvert because I don't have no friends I don't want no friends now nah, you stay over there no you can't come by my house what now nah, I don't want I don't want to go yeah but all the honey's gonna be there that's all right I catch me one in the laundromat I be by myself for my skill set and for my determination and my intellect I'm very smart I'm very intelligent I'm, I'm I'm courageous I'm bold I'm aggressive I look good I'm handsome I can speak I've been to school I got the the I've been miseducated by the American school system uh, the miseducation of the Negro by Carter G Woodson I got the undergraduate degree I got a graduate degree but that was nothing but the best study that I've ever done was my own self-research. Zane, shout out to my nigga Zane. You understand? Thank you for that super chat, Zane. Von Wilkes, thank you for that super chat. The greatest education that I got was the education that I self-reached, that I took myself to the library. Let me read this. Give me that encyclopedia. Give me that dictionary. Let me look up these words. Let me copy them down. You understand? So, I'm just, you know, but I fail too. I make mistakes too. D Block, thank you for that super chat. I fail. I make mistakes. I make bad decisions. You know what I'm saying? I make, I, I, I make mistakes and I fail. And sometimes I make the same mistakes. I'm human. But I just don't give up. I just don't give up. I have a lot of tenacity, right? And I refuse to lose. So me knowing that and me knowing what it takes to make it in America, I just, it's a competition to me and I hate to lose. I like to win. So don't be goddamn thinking you gonna hook yourself up to my train. You get your own locomotive and you start your own train. Only one dude can hook himself up to my train, and that's Little Sean. That's it. That's it. I collab with people, people that support me. They buy something from me. I call them on the phone. They email me, Sean, I want to do a mentorship or whatever. We get on the phone. Sean, can you help me do this? Can you help me do that? Do that? Yeah, but you got to pay. You got to pay. This, I'm not a nonprofit. I'm not a 501c3. This isn't goddamn Salvation Army, the Boys Club, the, the Girl Scout, Cub Scout. You know what I'm saying? I'm a for-profit entity. Foundational Black American, or goddamn if you from Hong Kong, both of y'all got to pay. I'm not doing this for free. The hell you think this is? This is America. You gotta pay. But when you compensate me, I'ma give you my all. And I'ma go over and above. You ask anybody, you ask anybody that's done business with me. I always over deliver. I over deliver. I over deliver because I want that stuck in your dome like a thumbtack. Boop, Sean over delivered. I told him I needed him to do this. He did this and he did some more. Yeah, I fucks with him. And then he gonna tell the world. Somebody gonna ask him, yo, you did business with Sean G? And be like, yeah. Is he money or what? Or he a piece of shit? Nah, that nigga money, man. He did this. I paid him just to do this. But he did this, that, and that. For the same amount of money? Give me his number. Let me call him. A lot of y'all so weak. You snakes. You want to cut corners. You want an easy route to success. So... Instead of giving it 100% when somebody pay you to do something, you do 87% and you leave 13% in the trash can. That's why your business don't work.
Magic, thank you, man. I know how this shit go. I know how this shit go. I know how this shit go. My word is everything. What come out my mouth is everything to me. I used to didn't be like that. I used to be real deceitful and I would tell people lies for no reason. I was just a liar for no reason. I would say I would do something and wouldn't do it and knew I wasn't gonna do it when I said it. That's how fucked up I was when I was a younger man, dumb man. But now I learned that your reputation supersedes you and your words got to mean something. You got to say what you mean and mean what you say. When you say you're going to do something, you got to motherfucking do it. Because your whole reputation and your name is on it. MZ, all lies have an ex expiration date. You will be exposed. You will be exposed. You better tell your story fast. Because if you lie, it will come to pass. That's Stevie Wonder on his album, uh, um, Visions. Name of that song is Jesus Children of America. He said, you better tell your story fast and if you lie it will come to pass you're gonna get exposed and you're gonna get exposed as a trash can nobody gonna want to do no business with you you a liar you a liar and that's how a lot of these countries feel about america now china russia india all these countries that have risen in power and strength, they know America's a liar. They tell too many lies. Nobody trusts what comes out of this country's mouth no more. And once you get that kind of reputation and then people not afraid of your power, your military power no more, you in trouble. You in trouble. That's why if you got a girl, a wife, or you dealing with a couple honeys, man, tell them bitches the truth. Yeah, I'm fucking you. And I fucked them two girls over there too. I'm see her and I see her. Why you do that, Sean? What you listen, what's up? This is what it is. And she ain't going nowhere. She ain't going nowhere. They're gonna get mad, but they ain't going nowhere. Because they respect the truth. Everybody respects the truth. Everybody wants the truth. Even if it hurt, tell me the truth. Because even after you hurt me with the truth, once I get over the hurt, I got to look back and say, and but they told me the truth though they they and somebody asked me say yo is she a liar or is he a liar nah there ain't no lie nah even though i may not like what you said yeah Been on here an hour already. Don't lie to me. Tell me the truth, man. Tell me you don't like me. Tell me to my face. That's why I don't. I don't hate a Ku Klux Klansman. I don't hate uh, a redneck white man from Alabama or from Kentucky or Tennessee that don't like niggas, right? Because he's being honest. He tell you flat out, I don't like you. And this is why, you understand? You gotta respect the man like that, that can look you in your face and tell you the truth, even though you may not like what he's saying. You gotta respect the man that can tell you the truth. That's what they didn't like about Donald Trump. He tell you to your face, tell me to my face what it is. I can get more business done I can have more trust and belief and faith in the Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan if me and him got into business than with a nigga of foundational black America of my own. Because I don't know what this nigga on. He could be smiling on my face, stabbing back. But I know, and he know how I feel and I know how he feel. You can't be, 
judging people for how they were raised. You know, uh, uh, a, a sister or a brother that was raised as a member of the Nation of Islam, as a kid, and was taught to hate white people their whole life. That's how they were raised. Right or wrong, whatever, that's how they were raised. And even though you may not agree, if they're professing that, even though you don't like it or agree, you got to respect what they're saying. Because honesty is, is truth. People want truth, whether they hear it, whether they like it or not. You ain't got to agree with what I'm saying. You ain't got to agree with what I'm saying or not. Don't, don't, don't come in my face, tell me you like me, and you talk behind my back 15 minutes later. I don't like that. People want to hear the truth. People want to hear the truth. Look at this dude. But look at the young black man. Majority been lied to. No hope or got us. Oh, 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 the young black man been lied to. No hope, no God. Oh, poor baby. Everybody in the world, all 8 billion people come and let's feel sorry for the foundation of black America. Let's, let's feel sorry for him. Oh, fuck out of here, man. Nobody care about you. Nobody care about me. Don't nobody care about we was in slavery. Don't nobody care about none of that. Don't nobody care about us. Don't nobody care about you. Stop crying. You sound like a little girl. Stop crying. Hey, yo, you got a female channel? Now, this is a man. So you got a female channel? You got a female channel? Yeah, go over there. Go over there. Y'all crying, whining, and all that. Y'all cry babies over there? You got Kleenex and tissue? Yeah, go over there. Nobody care about you and what happened to niggas, man. No, nobody care. No, nobody care. We don't even care. We don't even act like we care. Cry baby. Get your cry baby ass out of here. Oh, oh, my people was in slavery. Oh, give me reparations. Give me, uh, give me, help me, help me. I don't want to help myself. I want you to help me. Because what happened 40 years ago, please help me. Get off my channel, man. Get off my channel, man. We help ourselves here, man. We men. We men. Oh, I was in Africa. There was a lion. Over in Africa, there was this lion, right? He was a male lion. Big, strong male lion. He couldn't catch no wildebeest. He couldn't catch a zebra. He couldn't catch nothing. Yo, somebody catch a gazelle for me. Somebody catch a zebra for me. And all the other lions was looking at this nigga like, Yo, you see this nigga, man? They said, should we help him? Nah, don't help him. Don't help him. Let him starve. And when he dying and he gets sick and weak, we gonna eat his ass. Get your weak ass off my channel, man. Get your weak ass off my channel. Biracial people, don't nobody care about y'all either. Don't nobody care about you. Don't nobody care about me. Don't nobody care about nobody. Don't nobody care about none of y'all. School! Don't nobody care about you. Don't nobody care about him. Don't nobody care about nothing. Nobody cares. 
You got nothing coming. The only thing you got coming in your life is what you give yourself. And you can get on that dumb ass shit all you want. Pour me, pour me, pour me, pour me another drink. You get no sympathy from me. You get no sympathy from me. I was a foundational black American male in the 70s and 80s in this country. And I had a lot of opportunities that a lot of the foundational black Americans in the 40s and the 30s and 20s didn't have. And I wasted a lot of time doing stupid shit. You young dudes today, you got all the opportunity in the world. Something in my eye, man. You got all the opportunity in the world. Y'all just weak. You weak. That's your life. That's your life. Something in my eye, man. I ain't coming to help you, and ain't nobody else coming to help you. Ain't nobody coming to help you. Douglas kid, Malcolm kid, MLK kid, you don't. So what you want me to do? What you saying? What you saying? Where you from, man? You Russian or you Ukrainian or what? Some people cannot pay the price of action. All right, then you can starve. It ain't my responsibility. My responsibility. Malcolm Kidd, Martin Luther King Kidd, and Douglas Kidd, and what happened to them? They got killed in their 30s. They got assassinated in their 30s, and niggas still didn't change. Foundation of Black Americans still didn't change. And don't follow none of the principles of Malcolm X. They don't follow none of the principles of Muhammad Ali. They learned absolutely nothing. So what the hell is you talking about? The hell you talking about? better go for self the hell are you talking about everybody crying want help I came out of prison at 47 years old I, I didn't go get no welfare I didn't get no food stamps I didn't get no EBT card I didn't get no section 8 I didn't get nothing I didn't get nothing, nothing, homeless, homeless at 47, homeless after having lost a million dollars. At least I made a million dollars in this country. Some of y'all, Spanish, white, Arab, you got the you got the complexion for the protection, you got the right skin color, you white in a white man's world, and you ain't gonna make a million dollars. A lot of you foundational black Americans live here, speak the language, none of y'all ain't gonna never make a million dollars, and you ain't got no felony, you ain't got none of that. I had all of that. Still made it. I got out of prison at 47 with nothing. Huh? Window cleaning window cleaning everything you see i do now is from a window cleaning from a three dollar window that's where i started at and i'm talking to all 103 of y'all fuck all y'all now what about that what about that you can't come to me complaining and crying about nothing i don't entertain that type of weakness you know how I felt? You wanna know how I felt? Getting told no, I couldn't clean windows for $7? Cr 
crybabies, all y'all crybabies. You're so weak. You got no resilience. You have no will. There's no resolve. You've never been able to reconcile in your mind the reality that you must go out into nature and kill what you want to eat. You don't understand that concept. You want a stimulus check. You want Section 8. You want welfare. You want the hookup. You want reparations. I don't want nothing from none of y'all. Except to leave me alone. A lot of y'all have never even no SSI. I don't get nothing. I've never gotten welfare ever in my life. Never. 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 I don't want nothing from the United States of America. I don't want no kind of help because I know their history and I know what they did to my people. So I don't want nothing from them. I'll show you that I can do it without your help. And you had my mother. My mother was picking cotton as a little girl for 75 cents a day. My mother picked cotton. You weak ass niggas wouldn't know nothing about that. You was born in 1990s, in the 2000s. Y'all got all the opportunity in the world. Whatever you want to do, all the opportunity in the world. And y'all don't do nothing. That's why you hate yourself. That's why you hate yourself. Self-made, Venture Beat. Self-made. Self-made. You got to be a special kind of guy to make it in America. And I did all this in the New York City metropolitan area. It's one of the toughest areas in the world to make it. All money ain't good money. That's why you lost that million. I lost that million because I got greedy, nigga. You don't know why I lost my million. You wasn't there. I lost my million dollars because I got greedy, and I was, um, I was greedy, and I lacked discipline. Ben Martinez, thank you for that super chat. Hey, Sean, what do you think about doing a job you hate? Keep doing you, brother. I lost my million dollars because I got reckless and I let greed take over. And um, I got greedy. That's why I lost my million. You don't know how I lost my million. Mind your business. Hey, Sean, what do you think about doing a job you hate? I don't know, Ben. I would never do that. I don't do no job I hate. I love what I do. Hey, Quan, you want anybody on here with a wrench, man? Where my, where my wrench dudes at, man? Get these sucker boys off my channel. Where my wrench dudes at? Hey, Ben, um, thank you for the super chat, but um, I love what I do. I love what I do. Um, have I ever had a job I hated? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. It didn't work out if I hated it. Quan, there you go. Quan, if you see, don't don't hit nobody upside the head too quick. It's me. Hey, Sean, you sell hoodies? Something is in my eye, man. Um, if you hate your job, you're not gonna be on there long because it's gonna it's gonna show up in your in your performance. I hated, when I first started cleaning windows, I hated it. But then I started to love it. Then I started to love it. Yeah, I sell hoodies, man. You know I sell hoodies, man. Rod D, I see you, man. You know I sell hoodies, man. Go on my website, gumbypublishing.bigcartel.com. 
They $325, nigga. Can you afford that? Can you afford that? It might be too strong for you. Thank you for the $2 super chat, though. Thank you. But I love what I do, Ben. Appreciate you, it's me. If you buy one, I'm gonna call you. Put your phone number in there, I'm gonna call you. Um, I love what I do. I got a good life. My life is exciting because I don't know, I don't know, I don't know where my life is going. That's what makes my life exciting. Anything can happen in my life in any given moment. Anything good can happen. I can get a phone call that could change my life in an hour. You know? So I love what I do, man. Appreciate the super chat and the comment. But I wouldn't do nothing that I hated. I would do something that I love. All you young dudes, man. Do something that you love. Do something that you love. Don't waste no time doing something you don't like. MZ, thank you, man. Anything is possible. Shout out to my nigga Zane, man. Green Crystal's in the house. Zane, appreciate you, man. Thank you for all your support. All the PayPal's you send me. The baseball cards you sent to Little Sean. The baseball you sent to Little Sean. The books. All of that stuff, man. We appreciate you, man. Y'all hear that dog barking over there? Y'all hear that dog barking over there? Great, man, I got a great life. <clears throat> yeah, I did 10 sets of 10 today. I work out every day. 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 I gotta be the best. <clears throat> I take some days off sometime, my body tell me to, but for the most part, I'm going. When you in prison, when I was in prison, every nigga, you in prison, you work out every day. Everybody works out every single day. And you gotta work out, cause you gotta keep up. Some niggas go two, three times a day. I'm so glad I got that, I developed that habit, man. I learned a lot of good stuff going to prison, man picked up a lot of good traits and a lot of good characteristics that I could have only gotten by going there. And I brought them out here to the free world and I'm applying them the same principles, the discipline, the aggressiveness, the, the, the physical fitness, the sleep. You gotta go to sleep. You gotta go to sleep. That's when you grow. Determination. Uh, dealing with adversity, going into silence, being by yourself, um, um, reading body language, reading eye contact, all that stuff, man. Patience, learning how to wait, 
Learning how to wait. Learning how to wait. Learning how to wait. Learning how to wait. I got the fly beard. I got a lot of gray in my beard. Anybody want to do a mentorship session with me, send me an email at the podcast with soul at gmail.com. We talk about it over there. I sleep seven hours, man. The 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 uh the the t-shirts the t-shirts if you, what you want a two x the t-shirts they run they run what they say they run what they say what did I eat today I ate um I got up this morning I drank a cup of coffee um I got up I drank a cup of coffee I left the house I don't think I ate nothing yet today I don't think I ate nothing yet today. T-shirts run, they fit good. They fit you. You a 2X and you buy a 2X, they fit good. All my stuff is good. All my stuff is quality stuff. I don't sell bullshit. I got these sneakers. I was gonna sell these sneakers. These are little Sean sneakers. See these sneakers? Never stop. Got my logo on it. Never stop. Little Sean on the tongue. Little Sean on the tongue, but I didn't. I didn't. I was gonna sell them, but I don't sell them because the quality ain't good enough. I could wear them because I'm promoting my brand, but I'm not gonna sell them to nobody else. The quality ain't what I think it should be, because I was gonna sell them for two hundred. But I can't do that. I got my name on them. Yasa Khan, thank you for the super chat. Sustenance, big bro. Thank you for that $5 super chat. All my stuff is good. My books, I'm not selling no $20 books. My books are $50 a piece because my whole heart is in them books, man. My whole life, my soul is in them books. Yo, Roland Lee, you waiting on that song, huh? Hey, man, why you keep asking me the same question, man? How many hours sleep? I just told you that, man. Don't ask me that shit no more, man. I'm gonna have them niggas hit you with the wrench, man. Now, I ain't never heard of no high-dose vitamin C IV therapy. I ain't need to stick no vitamin C in my vein. No deals, kid. Make no fucking deals. My shirt is what it is. The price is the price. If you don't want it, don't buy it. You don't say that shit when you go to Foot Locker. Or when you go to Macy's, you say to me, cut a deal. And no, you ain't gotta hit me on no gram. I don't cut no deals. Pay the full price and don't buy it at all. I don't care if you don't buy it. I'm still a fly nigga, either way. Get pussy too. You ain't got to buy it. Somebody else will buy it. I sell my stuff all over the world, man. My stuff sells. People support me. Rod D, tell him, Rod D. Cut him a deal. The hell you think this is, nigga? What you think, you at Chinatown on Canal Street? Yeah, you at a flea market? This ain't no flea market. This is my business. This is my life. This is how I live. This is how I eat.
I don't sell the shoes. You heard me. I told you I don't sell the shoes. I told you the quality wasn't good. The hell is you asking me about them for? Didn't you just hear me say that? I'm not your bro, neither. The shoes, bro, I'm not your bro. I don't know you. You're not my brother. I'm not your bro. I don't know you. I'm out here in the street light. Donnie Williams, what you laughing at, man? I tore my bicep, man. I did a whole video on that. Go on my channel, you can see the whole video. I tore my bicep doing preacher curls. I went too heavy. Ripped it. About 20 something years ago. Look at the street light. Doing prayers in the night, saying prayers to the street light. This been the most dead life, living in the gangsters' paradise. Mark, what's up, man? That was me. How you doing, man? I text you. That thing wrapping up, Mark. I'm out. I'm gonna see you pretty soon. I'm gonna call you. I know you're busy doing your thing, but. My mother's state from the wrap up, man. So we can talk about that when you get a chance. I hope everything is well with you. I hope you're still taking it personal and don't take no shorts, man. It's all about winning. Oh, I, I sent you. So I sent you. If I send it from my other number, that's my two. I got two numbers now. One from my YouTube channel that I do my uh, mentorship sessions with. And then I got my old number. So you got both numbers. So lock them both in. That's me. Both of those are me. Uh, you're not the Compton swap me. Yeah, I don't know no swap me. I ain't offended, man. I ain't offended. What's up, Mark? You just emailed me about the shirts, kid? Let me see. Let's see. Where'd you send the email to, man? What would you do differently to stay out of jail if you could go back? I wouldn't do anything. That experience sharpened me up. I don't regret my life. I don't regret the mistakes I made. I don't regret nothing. I wouldn't want to stay out of jail. Going to prison saved my life. Going to prison, going to federal prison was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. It's right up there with the birth of my son and me getting clean from drugs and alcohol. I wouldn't change nothing. What email did you send it to, man? I got no email from you, man. You a liar, man. Get your ass off my channel. Don't never come back. Get your lying ass off my channel. I know when you first went in, it was super stressful. How long did it take before you settled down and got focused? It took me about uh, the first day. The first day I got there, I was scared. Um, it took me about a week. After about a week, I settled in. How hard was it for you to adjust when you got released from prison? I remember the first week I got out, I lost weight. I was so stressed out. I was so... Um, you know, I was stressed out and I lost a lot of weight the first week because I was nervous, I was scared, I didn't, you know what I'm saying, I was homeless. So that first week was pretty tough. Yeah, I did interview Tretch. Tretch was a dope interview. Tretch from Naughty by Nature.
Saying prayers in the night, saying prayers in the street light. Them spending most of their life living in the gangster's paradise. Them spending most of their life. What did I eat today? Somebody asked me what I ate. What did I eat? I had a cup of coffee this morning. Um, I ate a fish sandwich. I, ate, I had a fish sandwich. After I worked out, I went and got me a fish sandwich. That's all I ate so far today. A whiting sandwich. That's it. Yeah, I had a routine in prison. After I settled in, after you get through the depression of being there, and after you get through the shock of being there, and you get to a level of acceptance, you understand that you have to move on with your life in prison, right? Because I was looking backwards. I was living in the past. I was blaming people for putting me there. I didn't take no responsibility for me put, being there. But once I, once I stopped crying like a little girl, and once I stopped acting like a sucker, right? And I accepted like, yo, you here, man. And you put yourself here. You did this shit to yourself. Then I started the program. And once I started the program, the time started to fly by. But when I was sitting there lamenting and living in the past and blaming this one and that one, the time went slow as hell. And when I say program, I mean, get a routine. And my routine was the CO would come around every morning at like five, come around like 518, between 512 in the morning and 518, and they would do their count. So they shine the flashlight and you could hear their keys jingling. And that would wake me up and I would get up, I would get up at 5.18 in the morning, I would make my bed, and I would try to be quiet because my bunkie was sleep. Because you slept with a bunkie, you gotta be quiet. And then a bunch of other niggas around you is sleep. So you can't be, you can't be goddamn, well I wasn't, and most dudes, you can't be waking everybody up that early in the morning. You, you get you, you know what I'm saying? You niggas be ready to fight, you know what I'm saying? So I would get up, make my bed, I would go brush my teeth, and then after I came back from brushing my teeth, I would go make my cup of coffee. And I would make my cup of coffee, and this other white dude, this older white man, he would he would have all the TVs turned on, and one of the TVs would be on CNBC. And uh, I would go and I would sit in the car room and I would write or either I would read what I had wrote the day before as far as positive, positive affirmations. Um, and then I would get my day started. Then I would go to breakfast at like 5.55, they would, call everybody down for breakfast, six o'clock, 6.03. I would go eat, then I would come back to the unit, brush my teeth again, and um, of course I would get dressed before going to main line. I would come back and um, get ready to go to work, because I had to report the work. I had to go to work detail I would report to work at um, 7.15, 7.20, but I would go work out. I would go do my cardio when I came back from Mainline, like 6.30. So I would do cardio from like 6.30 to 7.15. Then I would go check in my work detail, and then I would study. I would, I had to mop the, my job was to mop the career thing, the career center. I would do that and then I would just do whatever I wanted to do after that, work out, but I would go read the, I would read the Wall Street Journal cover to cover. 
I would read the USA Today cover to cover, even the advertisements. I read everything on that newspaper, even the date, all that little shit on the bottom. I didn't have nothing but time. And my mind was so sharp, my brain was so crisp. And then we would study the stock market. My nigga Black was trading uh, currencies and commodities. And we would just sit in the back, we would have these lofty conversations, we would have these highly intellectual conversations, man. Some of the most brilliant dudes I met in the world, I met him in prison. White boy named Jeff, he was in there, he was from Detroit. My nigga Black was from the Boogie, East St. Louis. Nigga Monty was from Little Rock, Arkansas. I was from Jersey. What was the other dude's name from Virginia? Um, and all we used to do was read books and talk about books. Percy the astronaut, what up? King Eric, what up? And um, then I would work out and I just started programming. And once I started programming, the time just flew by. The next thing I know, I looked up, damn, nigga, you been here four months. Boom, I'm programming. Damn, you been here seven months. Eight more months to go. You know what I'm saying? I worked on my, I worked on my mind control. I worked on my mind control. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't jacking my dick every day. I would go, I would tell myself I would go 30 days without jerking off. Then when 30 days came, I say, let's do another 30 days. Then I would go like 60 days without jerking off. And that's when I started to really master my mind, right? And once I was able to master that, then I was able to master my diet. I'm, I'm cutting out the sugar. I'm not eating no sugar. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna drink water with every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I just took myself I just took myself mentally to just like a whole nother level, man. I took myself mentally. That school look fly right there, don't it? My school and my video look better than your school and your video. So, and that was when the discipline game came in. It's like now, I don't need pussy. I could go without pussy. I'd get it now. If she gonna, if it come to me now, I'm gonna get it. But to be out like chasing it, and be off my square and be disorganized and out of control and, you know, uh, greedy about it. I don't got to do that. I learn how to control my mind. Yo, somebody get this dude out of here with the sleep, man. Hit him upside the head with the wrench, man. This nigga up out of here, man. I'm tired of this nigga with this shit, man. Stupid ass questions, man. So that's what it was. That's why I outwork all of y'all. That's why I that's why my discipline is what it is. That's why I was able to take a window cleaning business and turn it into this. Yep. Percy, thank you for the super chat. What do you do when you're changing, but your family still treats you the same? You gotta get away from them. You gotta get away from them. If people are not treating you the way that you wanna be treated, you gotta get away from them, cut them off. You gotta get rid of them. You gotta get rid of them. You gotta demand your respect. You gotta demand your respect. Demand it. You gotta demand it. You gotta demand your respect. I got my uh, mouthwash. Sean, what's up, man? Two dollar euro, Sean from Ireland, man. My nigga from Ireland.
I always keep my breath clean and fresh because I never know when a honey going to want to kiss me. I never know when a honey going to want to kiss me because they all want to kiss me. All the honeys want to kiss me, man. They say, Sean, can I kiss you? I said, yeah, baby, you can kiss me. Come in. Come give me some sugar. And you know what she do? She come give me some. You know why? Because I told her to. That's why. You got to tell them honeys what to do, man. You don't ask them. Say, Yo, come here. Come here. Excuse me. Come here for a minute. Come here. They going to come. All right, Sean, I see you. Nah, I don't believe in no overtraining. I do calisthenics. You can't overtrain doing calisthenics. You can overtrain doing weights. You can't overtrain doing no body weight exercise, calisthenics. Nah, I don't believe in overtraining. Shot town. I don't believe in overtraining. I don't believe in nothing nobody say. I believe in what I do. People got limitations on their minds. Your limitations don't have to be my limitations. Your limitations for you don't got to be my limitations for me. You got limitations on your mind. You got shackles on your mind. You don't believe you could do nothing. I believe I could do anything. Hassan Nassar, what up? I rest when I need to rest. Texas, what's up? I work out every day because I like to stay young. I mean, look at how good I look. quick you work out in prison you are gonna see results quick because it's unlike anything nobody works out like dudes in prison man. nobody not the nfl not the ncaa football sec conference you're gonna see results immediately because the number of reps that you do is insane the number of sets and reps that you do is unlike anything you've ever pushed your body to insane 200 push-ups 300 push-ups is nothing man in prison is five at least five on the minimum tip and this is every day and you're gonna lift weights Everything is prison style, man. Everything is prison style. Thank you, man, for the birthday wish. You're gonna see different type of rep ranges. You're gonna see different type of ranges in motion. You're gonna see dudes different dudes doing different ranges of motion. And you ain't gonna say nothing to nobody because they're going to bust you. If they don't like what you say, you're going to be scared that they're going to bust you upside the head with a weight. You're not going to say nothing. You say it on social media behind a fake profile, y'all do it. But live in person, you're not going to say nothing. You're going to shut the fuck up and mind your business. You're 
The music is coming soon, man. My song coming soon. My song coming soon. Yeah, I know I got great skin, nigga. I don't need you to tell me. What are you, dude or girl, man? You a dude or girl? What you looking at my skin for, man? I know my skin look money, man. You ain't got to tell me. I tell you that all the time. I look good. And when you look good, your skin gonna look good. When you take care of yourself, when you handsome man like how I'm handsome, your skin gonna look good. Do what I, what I do, you gonna look good. I got honeys to tell me that, man, all the time. Yeah, you a female with a fake profile, I don't believe you. I only did, how many pushups I did? 150? It was light. It was a light day. It was a light day. Light day. All New York dudes never lose y'all swag. I'm down south. I'm a down south dude. What's y'all secret, man? Yo, he made me on a fruit, fruit pop tip. Watch out, Sean. I know it's a deep question, but what do you think is the meaning of life? Nah, I ain't gonna never lose my swag, man. You see what it is with me, man. I'm money, man. I'm always money, man. You better, you better, you better stay ready, man. Stay on point your whole life. Look at that school. Look at that picture right there. Look at that right there. Look at that right there. I think I'm gonna make that my, I'm gonna make this my profile picture. Minute 48 second mark. This gonna be my profile picture. Maybe I look this way. Let me see, this might be my profile picture. I mean, it's gonna be my thumbnail. It's gonna be my thumbnail right here. All right, that's gonna be my thumbnail. I didn't go to Kenya. I went to Sudan, I went to Egypt, I went to South Africa, Swaziland, Lesotho, uh, KwaZulu, Natal. I didn't go to Kenya. I wanna go to Kenya though. I wanna go to Kenya. Now I don't use my GoPro. I only use my GoPro when I do uh, park interviews. I only use that when I do park interviews. I think I want some Chinese food, man. I think I'm gonna go get some Chinese rice, man. Yeah, I wanna go to Kenya. All right, y'all, let me get out of here, man. Y'all ain't talking about nothing, man.
Y'all ain't talking about nothing, man. I'm getting cold. I'm getting cold. Yeah, Africa's very beautiful, man. Beautiful, beautiful place, man. 